Can you give us a sense, San, uh, Sanjay, of how quickly uh, the, the production of these chips could be diverted to the United States and it could become a majority of the output? So this will be really for 2025, 2026, the start of production here in the U.S. With these $40 billion through this decade that Micron has committed to be investing, it will enable us to meet the growing demand for memory that is anticipated for this decade. Uh, memory is expected to grow faster than the rest of the semiconductor industry, and uh, memory consumption is expected to double by the end of this decade. And we will need more wafer capacity in order to supply that demand. So I'm really pleased, and on behalf of the 45,000 team members of Micron, to be here today as President Biden signs this CHIPS and science legislation that really solidifies long-term technology and manufacturing leadership of America. And Micron is pleased to be playing an important role with commitment of $40 billion of investment, which will bring 40,000 jobs, including 5,000 direct jobs at Micron, and another 35,000 jobs in construction, support, services, with suppliers and in the community. And of course, this is the largest investment in semiconductor many memory manufacturing here in the US. This will be made over the course of the decade, bringing our supply online with the industry demand trends as well. So yes, I mean, today, less than one in 50 chips in the memory chips in the world are produced here in US. With Micron's commitment, it will enable us to produce one in 10 chips of the global memory consumption here in the US. So this is really major moving of the needle in terms of securing domestic supply chain and of course, uh, enabling national and economic security as well. How and much, Micron is pleased to be part of this. Sanjay, how much was this in the works even before the CHIPS bill was signed uh, into law? So what I can tell you is that the 2% of the global memory production that's taking place here in the U.S. today would have gone way down if it was not for chips, incentives, and grants. Because we have to be having a level playing field with foreign countries where the foreign governments have been providing incentives yeah. over the last couple of decades, and that's why so much production has moved overseas. So this incentive now is needed to reverse that trend from 2% becoming even smaller to now taking it to 10%, that means one in 10 chips being produced here. So our investment would have been far, far less if the chips and science legislation would not have been in place here in the U.S. We would have produced more overseas. So we Sanjay. are very pleased that we are being, we are able to be part of U.S. resilient domestic supply chain going forward. Sanjay, this comes at a tenuous time in the economy, very hard to gauge where things are going. Earlier this morning, uh, Micron put out a statement, as you know, uh, downgrading the forecast for the rest of the year's revenue. What went wrong in terms of areas that there has been less demand for than expected. So again, you know, we have to manage the business for the near term as well as for the longer term. Some of the investments that I just discussed here are really looking at long-term opportunity of increasing memory and storage. Everything is becoming about data and efficiencies that data is driving in businesses and consumers' life. So we have to be able to supply that growth in memory over time through the investments that we just discussed. In the near term, due to the macroeconomic uncertainties as well as due to high levels of inventories that come customers have built across various end market segments for us, those inventories ha are being adjusted down and that is what is resulting in reduced demand for us. So compared to our last earnings call, we have seen further weakening in the industry demand trends, primarily because of inventory adjustments broadening outside of just consumer to other parts of the markets, including cloud, including data center, and uh, industrial and automotive as well. So as these inventories at customers as well as at suppliers get balanced over time, then the industry demand health will return, we think, sometime in the next year. And we are, important thing is, we are taking action to cut supply growth in the near term to restore the health of the industry. So in the, in the the near term, yes, we are reducing our capex to prudently manage our supply growth and bring demand and supply in line. And of course, the, that will have to be done in the industry as well. And in the longer term, the secular demand trends are 
intact, they are healthy, yeah. and that's what is giving us confidence along with Micron's execution continuing to be solid in technology leadership, manufacturing yeah. excellence, product momentum, and customer relationships. Sanjay, I know you have to go meet with President Biden, and I, we only have one minute left, but I want to get your sense about reducing supply ahead of what you expect to be reduced demand. How do you avoid this whipsaw of a complete lack and shortage to a glut? So I think what's important is that there will be cycles in our industry. But if you look at across the cycles, just look at last five years, across the cycle, Micron actually strengthened its revenue and strengthened its profitability. We remain very committed to the financial model that we had discussed at our investor conference in May in terms of a cross cycle, continuing to deliver the revenue growth, profitability, and of course, free cash flow capability. So yes, we will always manage the business through the cycles but across the cycles, because of increasing demand for memory and storage and microns, continuing solid execution on all fronts, we are confident in the long-term business opportunities for our industry and certainly for Micron.